Welcome to the podcast series showcasing the winners of the 2024 Dyslexia Canada Educational Excellence Awards. We established this award to honour the outstanding contributions of individuals nationwide who work tirelessly to advance core pillars of Dyslexia Canada's mission, ensuring that all Canadian children have access to universal early screening and evidence-based, systematic, explicit foundational reading instruction. Right now, just over half of Canadian children are living in provinces committed to implementing that. Some educators, like our next guest, are working hard to improve these outcomes. In this episode, we delve into the read and talk professional learning community within Kativik Ili San Ili Renik, the school board of Nunavik, Quebec. Joining us from Kujuak is Joanna Rowe, the educational consultant spearheading this initiative. The Read and Talk Professional Learning Community is one of the winners of the 2024 Dyslexia Canada Educational Awards. Congratulations to you, Joanna, and your team. And first of all, do you have any personal connection to dyslexia or maybe an experience that motivated you to want to take on this challenge? Well, I don't have anyone in my family who are affected by dyslexia, but I often think back to a fellow student of mine uh, at Cambridge when I was at university And he was really quite severely affected. And with good support, he managed to get first class honours in history, which is a subject which is very intensive, reading and writing. So it just inspired me and showed me that if someone affected by dyslexia has the right supports and the right people who care, um, nothing will knock them down. They can achieve everything that their fellow students can achieve. So that's my leading light in things dyslexia. So how did you end up in Nunavik taking on this challenge? I have been in the North for five years, and this is my offering to truth and reconciliation. I am 55. I came back to Canada in 2019 first as a CUSO volunteer in Polituk in the Northwest Ter- Territories, and I moved to Kujuak in August 2020, first as a homeroom teacher, and now I work as a consultant supporting teachers. And so my interest in literacy goes back to 1990, and I went once my daughter became 19 and was flying solo, I decided to return to Canada. Um, I was actually born in Vancouver and give back. So this has been my journey for the last four or five years. And that's the reason why I'm here. Looking back to 2022, you were part of the Quebec Research and Reading Committee that was established by the Quebec Ministry to address the findings of the Ontario Human Rights Commission Right to Read report. Can you talk about the work of the Quebec Research into Reading Committee itself and tell us how it worked? Sure. So our committee uh, established by the Quebec Ministry and um, its brief was to address the findings of the Ontario Human Rights Commission Right to Read report. Our committee was held every so often and on the committee were English language arts consultants, and we worked on the report in our committee meetings. I feel very honoured to have been part of that project. And the project has now gone forward to the dean, that's the uh, directors of English in education, um, a network of consultants and experts and educators for English And so we'll see what comes out of the report and what the results will be. But I think it has already started a very important conversation. And um, I have great hopes that that will continue and that real concrete measures or initiatives will result from the report. Now, after that, you proposed the Read and Talk PLC pilot project to the team at Kativik Ili Sarnili Renik, the school board at Nunavik. Now, what prompted the need to create the Read and Talk professional learning community? First of all, I'm very grateful to our assistant director, Gillian Warner, um, here in Kujuak. She's been passionate about establishing PLC, professional learning communities, amongst our teachers. And one of my deep motivations in teaching and in supporting teachers is to promote a sense of self 
amongst the students and we can access motivation for learning to read through talk activities, so in class, opportunities to prove learning through oral competence in a language. And if the talk activities are really engaging for students, this will uh, enable literacy to, in the very broadest sense of the word, to be raised. I understand literacy as what you need to do your life, quite literally. And so it's connected very closely to self-efficacy. And we need our students to feel self-efficacy in everything they do. We need all our fellow humans to feel self-efficacy in everything they do. Self-efficacy in the sense of I can tackle challenges. I can rise to the challenge of what my day brings. So that's the first thing. And the second is to go for a structured literacy approach that it would include science of reading. And that benefits all students, whether there's a diagnosis or not. And you shouldn't need a diagnosis, really, of a, any particular challenge. Dyslexia is only one. But you shouldn't really need a diagnosis in order to benefit from services and a good approach that will help you. And structured literacy, including science of reading, is my choice. And this is what we're going to be working on with the teachers who are so enthusiastic and so optimistic about what we can achieve with the PLC. Well, it certainly helps if you have that support and optimism because you've taken on the very unique challenge of not just having to teach kids with dyslexia, but you also find yourself in a different culture and in a place where people speak a completely different language. That's right. And I think students in Nunavik face all the challenges that students in the south of Canada face, plus some. Most of our students live in very remote places, and our communities in Nunavik are not connected by road. And I know a lot of people in the south of Canada find that very strange to know that we don't have any interregional roads, so our communities are fly-only and that means that the logistical challenges of having experts such as school psychologists and special needs assessors to come up and travel to the schools, it's more complicated. It's not impossible, but it's more complicated. And these costs involved are also enormous. So getting the right services and assessments in is one thing. And it's, I think it's true to say that there's a growing awareness amongst the local people about challenges in learning such as dyslexia and other things and we still have some work to do to improve the connection and trust between school as an institution and families and support from home for students is very very important when they are working through their dyslexia and learning to read and the last thing that maybe is interesting for people outside Nunavik to know is that the most, if the students are Inuit, they're likely to have Inuktitut as a first language and it has a different writing system. And due to the cultural heritage, the interaction with print as a medium is still quite new. And so these are added challenges for people up here in Nunavik. One of the key objectives of the Read and Talk professional learning community is to disseminate the language patterns program and material that's deeply rooted in the science of reading. Now, many listeners may not have heard of the language patterns program. Can you tell us a little about how it started and how it works? Yes. So it's science-based reading instruction with a phonics sound foundation, which is going to benefit all the students, and it makes it culture fair because it is much less dependent on prior knowledge and vocabulary and so learning language patterns itself was actually developed it's kind of a mixture of old and new it was actually developed by one of Canada's first reading scientists Dr John Lynn and for the purpose of reducing numbers of students who struggled with reading and for a while it was the most commonly used program in Canadian classrooms and then when phonics fell out of favour as we went through the whole language approach, which we still use in many places, uh, language patterns w continued to be used, but more as a kind of resource, was more sort of something that was available rather than the core of what people did in teaching. 
And Dr. Brenda Lynn, who's daughter of the original author, is a graduate student of the renowned reading scientist Keith Stanovich. And she took it upon herself to revise and update the programme over the years. And we're lucky enough in Nunavik to have Brenda working alongside us. And she has been working in Nunavik for several years in, in the schools. So she's been supporting us in shaping an introduction of language patterns to the PLC and what we do um, in the schools when we teach reading. And Brenda is also supported by her husband, Dr. Ron Stringer, who's also a reading scientist, and her family who are involved, her daughter Stephanie Stringer. And so it's become a family project and has been updated and renewed it has decodable stories. So the students move through decodable stories about outdoor adventures. So it's culturally relevant for the young students here in Nunavik. They can recognize the scenarios that are illustrated in the books and in the words. And so this is what we want to leverage for us. It has been implemented in other parts of Canada in mainstream classrooms. And it's designed to help students achieve, by the end of grade two, a grade level of reading, reading practice. So this is what we're hoping is going to help in Nunavik. You mentioned earlier that you're in a remote place where there is only fly-in communities. How is the Read and Talk professional learning community helping teachers implement a structured literacy approach across all levels and languages? Well, the PLC, first of all, is platform for networking for teachers, and that's very important. Our teachers often give us feedback that they feel isolated, and when you're a teacher, you have a very intense workload. I know teachers listening can relate to that. So there's not so much space and time to connect with other teachers on a peer-to-peer level and share experiences and leverage competence So that's the first thing that I think is very important with this kind of community. And teachers can feel acknowledged in their experiences, acknowledged in their very high competence in many cases and in their personal qualities and in their dedication. And for us, it's a great feedback loop. So we have the opportunity to actually experiment in the classroom and try certain strategies out in a concrete way and have Teachers come back and report on how well it worked and how well students coped with the material offered or the activity and how the tools that we devise in the future are being received by students. So this is the important thing. And for teachers, a lot of teachers are not familiar with the science of reading approach to teaching reading. So this is also an opportunity for the teachers to train on the job, as it were, in their teaching practice and to shift their teaching practice, tweak things about their teaching practice so that they maximize the learning effect in amongst their students. So it's a circular dynamic and hopefully one that spirals upwards as we move forward. As you get that feedback from the teachers, have you recognized any challenges within the community that you're facing right now? Well, I mean, being apart from one another and the teachers are in different communities across the region, it's not so easy for them to connect and it's often not so easy for them to be released and take time to work on conceptual design or on discussions around uh, how activities will be introduced or how tools will be used. So that's a a challenge. Um, So it's a resource issue, of course. And I think it's also something that is a learning journey. So it is something that you need a lot of energy for as a teacher and to, uh, to make change and So it's something that is challenging for sure and uh, needs um, a lot of consistent attention for it to work. Well, it certainly sounds like it's gaining momentum. What would you like to see happen in the next few years? So we're in this situation where we have multi-level classes. That's the norm. And so differentiation is only going to become more important. 
And I think it would be important to make our programs a cohesive arc in terms of benchmarks and to create synergies across different pedagogies in all three languages. We have three languages here in Nunavik, English, French and Inuktitut, and creating synergies and common pieces like the science of reading, would be very beneficial for all our students because they would know what to expect. And so structured literacy would be a huge piece in making our programs more easily accessible for our learning community, whether that's students or teachers. And this is what I would really love to see develop in future. And I'm so inspired by the sense of optimism and enthusiasm amongst the teachers who are members of the PLC. I'm really excited about being able to try something out and to build upon what we discover works. So it would be wonderful if students could, as a result, find joy in learning and through fluency of reading. You know, if you can read then you're much more resilient against trauma, which is something that many of our students are affected by. And if you're fluent in reading, the world is yours, you know. And by the same token, if you're not a fluent reader, the world is not really yours. So moving through those developments and moving ahead, I'm really excited to see where the teachers and the students take us on our journey. And if we contribute to Nunavik communities, that's all the better. Well, you can tell by the way that you talk about this subject that you're very passionate about your work with the children and the educators in Nunavik. And we just want to congratulate you again on the award and wish you all the best in the future as you continue to pursue this. Thanks so much for joining us today, Joanna. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the series showcasing the winners of the 2024 Dyslexia Canada Educational Excellence Awards. To learn more about this year's winners, visit dyslexiacanada.org where you can read a blog about each of them. Stay tuned for our next episode.